as human beings, we all want to be seen, heard, and understood. We all are craving being seen, heard, and understood. Now, in this room, in your profession, times 10, seen, heard, understood, everybody, right? We love it. We feed off it. It's great. How many people do you know who are out to see, hear, and understand everybody? Right? It's like, who does that? Like, oh, that's strange. You do that? But true. So here's the opportunity. By developing a mastery of listening, you have the opportunity to differentiate yourself from every other business person in your market in the world because they experience you. And when you're listened to, like when you were talking to, listening to Super Dave, talk about how he experienced the listening, even in this little impromptu, a little bit contrived exercise, you know, in front of you, not the most comfortable in the world for him, he was still saying like, when, when you're really listening, I'm feeling affinity. I'm feeling like you care. I'm feeling like I matter. I feel important. I'm communicating more clearly. I'm sharing more. I mean, think about this in the context of your sales meetings, you know? If you're zeroing in and you're asking questions and really focused and putting all your effort on really trying to understand and listen to what they're saying, and as a result, your client is sharing more and more and more and more, what are they telling you? They're telling you what you need to say. So then you don't need to worry about what is there for me to say. They're going to tell you exactly what you need to say. They're going to tell you what they care about, and that's what there is to talk about. So there is a really fantastic book called Believing Brain. A bunch of neuroscientists put this book together because they discovered something that was really, that kind of changed the way that we think, of the, think about reality. Um, essentially, you've heard the saying that seeing is believing. If I see it, then it's real. You know, we there's tables in here, I see all of you. If I can see it, then it's real, then I can believe it. And what they found in their, in their research is that it's actually just the opposite. It's believing is seeing. Because what informs what we see and the reality we have, all the way down to seeing or not seeing physical objects, is based upon our beliefs, our ideas, our limitations, all the constructs that we have about how the world works in our head, that we've been taught, programmed, influenced, is what makes up what we see, in both literal sense and in figurative sense. Like, physical things can be invisible to people. I mean, well, just the other day, I tripped over something. I tripped over the tape. Where was it? Right here. I tripped over that, right? That was there, but it was invisible to me. So what does this tell us about other people? It tells us we don't really share much of reality, right? We're in the same room, and what really connects us to where we can actually share reality is by the language we use. It's by communicating back and forth. So the only way for you to really get clear on what's most important to that client, and I'm going to put this in the context of sales, but really this applies at every aspect of life. Any relations with any other human beings, this applies to. But especially in the context of sales, right? Because we're here, we're looking to do business, we want to be better at business. So let's look at this in the context of, of sales. Is that if I put all my effort to get over into your world and understand your world and communicate with you from your world, then we can actually get somewhere because then they're experiencing that you understand them, you understand what's important to them, and you can speak to what's important to them. And if they're going to come up with reasons to do business, then it's going to be out of that. You're not going to be guessing, like, oh, what should I tell them? Well, I'll tell them everything, and one of these things is sure they're going to like. No, oh, they're going to glaze over and go to sleep. We're always looking for, uh, gosh, do they like me? Do they like me? Am I sharing enough for them to like me? I hope that they like me. I hope that they like me. And I can assure all of you right now that they wouldn't be actually meeting with you if they didn't think you knew something. So I'm going to share this again later on, but I really, really want to hit this home because this is really huge. And when I learned this, this made a really big impact on me when I sat down with a sales meeting with other people in terms of my mindset is to get myself in a helping mindset. I'm the expert in that situation. 
They're coming to me for my expertise. I'm there to help them with whatever it is that they're trying to achieve. Just like you're there to try to help them to figure out what they want, what's going to make this amazing, what's that going to be, right? So what you don't have to do is you don't have to impress them. They're already impressed enough to meet with you. You don't have to impress them. So that cuts about two-thirds of your talking out right there. <laughs> right? Because you don't have to sit there and tell them everything that's great about you. Get into their world. What are they interested in? What are they concerned about? What, are they, what aspects about what you do turn them on the most is what's available to you. You can just be the expert and help them get in there without trying to convince them you're the expert. It actually works against you the more that you try to impress upon them that you're great. Because it's communicating, I don't know if this guy thinks he's great or not. Because he keeps pushing this forward. It's actually creating doubt. So coming with a mindset like, I, I'm a pro, I'm really great at what I'm doing, we're gonna have a meeting and I'm gonna sit down with you and we're gonna, in this time together, we're gonna find out how I can help you. So what I wanna share with you today is I wanna share with you some techniques that you can use to be able to develop your awareness so that you can practice active, focused, listening and it's an opportunity to be able to practice it and, and it is a practice it's like mixing it's like anything that you've developed a skill around you don't go okay I got that now that's good I don't need to keep working on that you know if if you stopped mixing for five years and went back to it you're not nearly gonna be like you were five years ago so it's a practice to continually work at and continually develop over time and it will get better and there will be moments where you don't listen at all. But you'll continually, it, it'll, it's something, in other words, there's no destination. It's something that you take on as, as, a, as a practice. So there are three levels of listening. Let's put this in a context. The first level is the level of me. And this is like giving directions, right? So you go to someone, it's like, all right, I need to get to the mini mart. How do I get there? And they're telling me, well, go left down there, and then you turn by the purple cow, and then you drive up there, and you go by the big chicken, and then you stop, and there's mini mart. It's right there. And the whole focus of that is just for me to get what I need out of that, and then go do my thing. That's the level of me. I'm just getting strictly what I need. I got those directions. Thanks. I'm good. And then off I go. And with any luck, I won't have forgotten what I was told. Okay? The second level, the second level, the second level, is a level of we. This is where we spend most of our time as human beings. This is our default place to be. It's called the level of we. And this is listening to respond. And this is where you're listening to the other person until you hear or think of something you want to share. And most of the time, the normal human response is to stop listening and wait to talk. Oh, this story's really long. I get to the point. Yeah. Literally, like, I have my son. I see my son. It's hilarious. So I'm, I'm sharing something with him, and I can see the moment that he has, he switches into, I know what I want to share. Because he literally starts doing this. <laughs> Just starts dancing in front of me. And then I'm like, okay, what? And he's like, oh, dad. And he, like, bursts out of him, right? And it's like, we, I've seen grown-ups. I've seen adults do. We do that. We get really excited. And we're totally tuned down. And we're like, oh, i got to hang on to this thought. I gotta remember enough about what they were saying so that I can kind of make some reference of it or just like go right past it altogether. So this is where we hang out most of the time is in this waiting to respond. And then there's the third level. And this is the sweet spot. This is the level of you. So meaning, as I'm listening, all of my attention and my focus is over there on you. It's over there in understanding what do you think? What's important to you? Why does this matter to you? Why do you care about this so much? What would be possible if that happened? Tell me more about that. Like it's all, I'm all over there. I wanna completely understand how you think, why you think, what's going on in your world. And this is what achieving or or I don't even like using the word achieving because it's not a destination, but working toward mastery is working at staying in this place because it's staying in the level of you 
because we know what the default is for human beings. It's kind of like wearing a life preserver and diving underwater, right? Because you're going to pop right back up. You're going to go down and pop up, but you're going to get better and better at it and, and better at staying focused. And especially when you think about that you're in a, if this is in a sales context, right? You have like 45 minutes with them or an hour that you sit down and you spend. So it's like the energy spent in that hour to be here at the level of you is for you to put all of your focus and only speak to what is important to them. So what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about techniques for you to develop that. Because that's kind of one of those things like throw you in the water and now swim. Just move your arms like this. Just kind of kick your legs. Meanwhile, you're drowning at the bottom of the pool, right? Like, ah, that doesn't mean anything to me, right? It's like listening is the same kind of thing. Like how many times, like even before, and let's tell I got a context to really understand the gap and became aware of how I listen and I don't listen, there was no space for me to improve. There was no space for me to develop and improve this, uh, this, this ability so I can get over in someone else's world. Whoops. So first thing is in the mindset. You know, and, and what a mindset is, is a mindset is kind of getting yourself focused on where do I want to focus the energy of my brain processing power? Where do I want to focus that during this meeting and during this time together? It's like declaring a focus point at the beginning of the meeting. And I really want to encourage you all to actually give yourselves Give yourselves like 15 minutes before you actually see your prospect to get yourself mentally prepared for this sales meeting, right? Each sales meeting means a great deal in terms of your bottom line. It's going to be a yes or a no, and, and every yes you get is going to improve things for you, right? So putting a little bit of time ahead of it to get your head in a space so that you're not, oh, hey, oh, I got here just in time. How you doing? Okay, terrific. All right, let me see if I can figure out what we're doing here. All right, so how you been? Whew, okay, it's kind of warm in here, you know, and you're just kind of bursting in and kind of like, oh, I'm a really busy guy. We're making this happen, right? What kind of mindset are you in in there? You're like, oh, I'm trying to figure out my space, figure out where I am. To actually prepare yourself and go like, what am I going to focus on? So first thing to consider in setting your mindset is Deciding that you're going to be curious. And then the last thing is, listen for the real problem. Uh, I had an experience once where I called GoDaddy because I wanted to, uh, I, I, I do my own WordPress site, and, uh, and I don't know much beyond just making the WordPress site go. I don't even know much about that. I know enough to make it look the way I want. And I called in, and I explained to the person on the phone, I said, I don't know a lot about the background stuff. And so I want something that I just don't have to worry about. And so immediately the guy goes, let me show you the cheapest option we have. And he set me up with the least expensive hosting package. That requires lots of technical knowledge, as I discovered later when I was trying to go in and change something. So I called back and I said, no, this isn't what I wanted. Because he wasn't listening for what my real problem was. I wasn't asking for what's the cheapest solution so I can get this in and get this in. So he's in that conversation. Everybody wants the cheapest. Instead of listening for the real problem, he was in his decision about what I wanted. Oh, this is what you want. This is what I offer. This is great. Three calls later, I finally get the person that goes, oh, well, it sounds like you want our all-in-one hosting package. It's the most expensive, but everything is handled. I'm like, yes, that's the one I want. That would make me super, super happy. That's exactly it. Because that person actually listened for the real problem that I was having. And how many times when I think of the past, and I think how many times and how long I've had such bad sales because I focused on things that I think they should think is important. Trusting you will know what to say. Here's one of the traps. So when we're, when we're talking or when we're having a conversation with someone and they're sharing with us, we naturally want to be prepared with what we're going to say when they're done talking. And we fear that if we just focus in on listening to just understand what it is you're trying to tell me and what you're saying and what's it, what matters to you, that when you stop talking, I'll be like, I have no idea what to say next because I didn't think of anything while you were talking. And we have a fear that that's actually going to happen. And I really, I invite you to try it out. If 
you feel insecure doing it at a sales meeting right away, try it out with another person. Try it out over lunch where you just keep setting aside, if you get ideas and things to share, just like, got it, you just let it go. Just keep letting it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, and then see if you actually don't know what to say when they're done talking. What will really happen that I've discovered from my own experience, and probably you've just had this experience as well in those times, because we move in and out of these spaces. This, isn't, this is not static at all. This is very fluid, right? Is that what I said coming out of that was exactly what needed to be said. And most of the time, what was said coming right out of what they said had nothing to do with me or what I was thinking. It was me reacting to what they were saying. Wow, that sounded special. Oh, that was scary. Oh, that sounds crazy. Wow, or I'd ask him a, a question to tell me more, to, to go deeper with that, to learn more. You are actually in the position of advantage as the listener, as them opening up and sharing. It puts you in that, that place. So you know you don't have to impress them. You can just sit there and really get in their world, figure out what their real problem is, what really matters to them, their big why of what's important to them about their event, about their day, or whatever that is, and then speak to that. And it's going to get you a lot closer to anything you're selling, whether it's an idea or whether it's getting your kid to brush his teeth. Any human being this works with. Don't press down on them. If you press down on someone, they're going to press back on you. Let them have the space. Just resist opening your mouth. The biggest, biggest thing, if you could take away one thing, it is resist the urge to talk. If there's one voice that is in your head from this seminar, in all situations, resist the urge to talk. Ask a question and resist the urge to talk and add and give. It's our natural place to be. And out of that, we'll develop an awareness of other people that you hadn't had. It'll like just open up. It'll be something you'll just discover.